Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips, I'm your host Linus, and we have another SSD update for you. So, recently, OCZ launched their Vector Drive. This is the true successor to the Vertex 4, using a third generation Indolinx controller, and let's see how it stacks up to some pretty hefty competition in the Neutron GTX from Corsair and the Plextor M5P. Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips, I'm your host Linus, and today we're going to be talking about the OCZ Vector. OCZ has a new CEO, a new direction as a company, and a new overall design philosophy. This drive took over 18 months to bring to market, it has a 5 year warranty, and it is basically just meant to turn the SSD market upside down. It has some hefty competition in the Neutron GTX from Corsair and the Plexter M5P, as well as the Samsung 840 Pro, which unfortunately wasn't able to be present today, but I think it puts up a pretty good fight and I think you guys are gonna agree with me. The first thing everyone wants to know when a new SSD hits the market is what are the specs like? So Slick, hit me. Ah! We meant specifications, not spectacles. So this drive right here is capable of over 500 megabytes per second in sustained reads and sustained writes. This is for the 256 gig version. The lower capacities will have slightly lower performance. However, that's already saturating a SATA 3 interface. 6 gigabit per second, so there's a lot of drives that can do that these days. Really how a drive separates itself is in terms of the consistency of the performance as well as in the random performance. So, in terms of 4K random reads and writes, this guy can do 100,000 IOPS reads and 95,000 IOPS writes. It uses an all new controller, it's an Indolinx Barefoot 3 controller, which is the first controller that has been designed, built, and validated by OCZ themselves after the acquisition of Indolinx. It is a significant improvement over something like a Vertex 4 or an Octane where it was using third-party hardware with an OCZ firmware. Now they've done the whole thing. It took over 18 months to bring it to market and it has a five-year warranty. So they have done the QC and they are gonna stand behind this guy. Part of what makes it perform very well compared to some more entry-level drives is it is using MLC flash. So it's using high-grade MLC flash. Some modern drives are using TLC flash which does reduce the number of write cycles that you can put onto the flash as well as reducing the overall write performance. So this will do well for reads and writes. It's also highly compatible. It has trim support. It works on Windows, Mac, whatever you want. And it's a two and a half inch form factor, which means it'll fit in any notebook because it is a slim drive, comes with a three and a half inch adapter, and last but not least, it comes with a Cronus cloning software so that you can move your old installation over to your new boot drive. Performance of modern SSDs without looking at it very, very closely is often hard to differentiate. So here we have Addo runs at a Q-depth of four with all three of our tested drives. Now you can see one of the most noteworthy things is how the Neutron GTX really runs away with it in terms of the large file size sequential transfers, but kind of tanks on the very small file size sequential transfers compared to both the Vector and the Plex Store M5P. And then moving on to a Q-depth of 10, here we go, we see a pretty similar story, so nothing that surprising. However, PCMark tends to tell a bit of a better real world story for these SSDs in terms of their performance. Now it should be noted that there is a clear winner. The M5P did come out ahead of the other two. We are running the latest firmware update. This drive got a pretty cool firmware update recently. However, guys, we're talking 40 points a 40 point spread or 150 point spread or so between all of these drives in scores that are ranging in the sort of 5,000 range. So we're talking like 1% overall difference in terms of real world scenarios. So pick the drive that has a longer warranty, pick the drive from the brand you trust, and pick a drive that has good consistent performance across whatever kinds of applications you want to use. So we've overlaid this graph, you had a chance to look at it. Now we are going to move right along to the end of our slideshow and talk about what else differentiates the vector. If you're looking for a high performance SSD drive, basically there's never been a better time. 
prices keep falling and there are so many great options. I mean, here we've got the Indolinks Barefoot 3, we've got the LAMD controller in the Neutron GTX, we've got a Marvell controller in the M5P, Sandforce is still a viable option, and finally, Samsung has their 840 Pro, which has their own proprietary controller. These are all great choices. Out of these three drives, things are very close, but the Vector looks like the slight winner in terms of the overall consistency of its performance. However, the 840 Pro is a solid competitor as well, even though it's not here. They actually trade blows in a lot of ways, with the Vector having slightly higher power consumption at idle, but slightly lower under load compared to the 840 Pro. The 840 Pro is a better peak performer, whereas when you trash the drive as much as you can, the Vector tends to come out ahead. And guys, oh, I should... I should mention this. Testing methodology, we filled up the drives to about 60% capacity before running any testing on them so they don't get that bare, clean drive sort of best case scenario, just so you guys know in case our numbers are a little bit different. So what has OCZ done with the Vector? Huge improvement over the Vertex 4, much better performance, much more consistent performance, and according to their new internal philosophy, much better overall quality control. Thank you for checking out this SSD update. I'm Linus, and I'll see you guys next time.